So what does a man wear today that belong to a woman and everybody knows it? Is it clothes or material? Garment, meaning clothes, yes. What about a dress? So if I was wearing a dress right now, reading the Bible, that would not look weird to you? Your outfit. No, no, no. If I'm wearing a dress, like a female clothing attire, dress, and you see me preaching out in the street, and you know it's a female clothing, I got heels on, the whole nine, that would not look weird to you. Yeah, but that's everybody. Everybody has their, their sleeves. Everybody has what they want to do. So, you just said not too long ago, you could love God, right? Yeah. And God says, if you love me, keep my commandment. Guess what? The opposite of that, if you don't love me, guess what? You hate me. Because you're not keeping my commandments. Yeah, that's that's so if you're not keeping God's oh, commandments, what are you doing? You're being rebellious. Right? I don't think you necessarily are going in with the intent of being rebellious or I hate God or I'm, no, I think we're all human beings going through life experiences. So yes, I'm, I'm a believer in God. I'm a spiritual person, but when it comes to being so structured, I'm not, I'm not there yet. So. so you're not there, why? Because you don't know. Because the scripture says, read that again, First John 5 and 3 again. Because there's a part you're missing on the scripture that said if you love God, right? Let's read it again for you. Because you don't know, like they say in the world, you know better, you do better. We obviously don't do better because we don't know better. But I feel like everybody is going to grow at their own time. I don't feel like I have to necessarily. No, pay attention to me, sis. Say that again, again. Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So God's letting us know, number one, in the scripture, that he have a people. And number two, he's giving a message to the people that are destroyed. Why are they destroyed? Read that again. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So God's letting us know as his children because you choose to reject me. Because you choose to allow the prophets to come out and give you the knowledge that you need, which is the laws, statute, and commandments. Because you're not worried about a camera, he said, I also will reject you. Read. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. So, at what point? God loves us. Back then, he loved us today. But because we're being rebellious, we are the type of people that are rebellious as hell. I'm going to say it straight. We are rebellious. The book is coming out. God is directly speaking to you and everyone who's walking around here. But one thing we don't realize, that we're special. This is the medicine that we need as a people. Because we're at the bottom. We don't realize we're at the bottom. But as the medicine is being given to you, but guess what? We can still go to church on Sunday. Let me give you a scripture that you may never heard of before. We do I mean 76 again. Because we are special. I made that statement, we're special. But if we're special, we have to come back to the Father. But we have to also understand why we're being punished from the Father. We. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So, this scripture will never be read in the churches. And the reason it's not going to be read in the churches because then your pastor must explain to you why there's a group of people that's above all nations upon the earth. Because what Christianity teaches us is that God loves everybody. Well, can't be true, because if somebody above all people that are upon the face of the earth, that means there's no equality with God. So, question I have for you, sir. Do you see yourself on the side right here? What's your nationality? Levi. All right, good. So, here's another question. Come here for a second. Were you born in Haiti or you was born here? Yeah. You were born here, so you don't really know much about Haiti. Yeah, no. 
How old are you, by the way, if, I, if you don't mind me asking? 22. Okay, so you you old enough to know this. You grew up with the culture of Haiti, right? So, do you know what the word Haiti means? Uh, Hades, uh, d uh, derogative term from the Greek Hades, also rule of the underworld. Hell, right? Because at one point when so-called white men came to come get us, we, we was rebellious. We fought them back. So we gave him hell. So he was classified as a specific group of people he was trying to capture, right? And he was given different names. So the thing about your name and certain names that was given throughout times, different part of our brothers and sisters that's on the side right here. You're gonna realize that your name was changed because divide and conquer. If you don't know you are brothers to the Dominicans, guess what? The Dominicans and you gonna be fighting. Right? If you don't know the African Americans, so called African Americans, are from the tribe of Judah, you're not gonna know who you are. You may have beef with the so called African American. But Read that again for us. But this is a group of people God was speaking to when he went, went through the Red Sea with Moses. And this is what God's saying about you right now. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So, as a so-called Haitian, God will call you from the tribe of Levi. That's what God gave you. He never gave you Haitian. Here's the reason. If I would ask you, who were your great, 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 great grandparents before they went to slavery, what would you say? Uh, ancestral from probably west to mid-Africa. Right, so you would agree to that they're not Haitian. Yeah. Right, so let me show you exactly how you got to Haiti, okay, through the Bible. And then you're going to realize throughout time as we read some scriptures that this is your history book. This is a book of prophecies that was stolen from you. Now, in the last days before Christ the Black Messiah returned, he must put back his prophets on the streets to edify the people. Because at the end of the day, your pastors will never teach you this. Read Deuteronomy 28 and 1. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So remember he said, you are a holy people unto himself, above all people, right? But here's the condition the Most High is giving you today, as a, uh, a Levite, right? He said, if you listen to me, son, and do and observe all my commandments, the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations of the earth, right? That's the stipulation. You got, you got, you got a father, obviously. Have your father ever beat you before? Nah, he's been dead six years. Okay, but if he did beat you, right, it would be for correction. Yeah. Right? Because as a father, he knows what's best for you. Don't cross the street. You cross the street, you go against his word, you should deserve a punishment. So that's the stipulation that the Most High has given us today, to put that in perspective for you. He, he said, if you listen to me, I'm going to put you high above all nations. Are we above all nations today? Not even close. Not even close, right? Because look around. We have a bunch of people walking around. We think that... We are as equal as the other nation, but God says, no, you're above everybody. But the, the state of the way we live is at the bottom. But something must have happened while we're at the bottom. Let's go ahead and show it to you. Verse 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So that was the stipulation between God and us and Moses. Listen to me son I'm going to raise you high above all nations. I'm going to give you whatever you want as a father but if you don't listen to me I'm going to send curses against you and it's going to follow you wherever you go. So based on how you 
Now read this Bible, you have to ask yourself, where am I in this Bible? Does these curse fits me? Or does it fit any other nations? All right, so I'm going to give you a few curses. Now you can identify yourself to say, okay, that's me. That's like a mirror I'm looking at that identify me and my people. So you ready? Let me give you a few curses. Verse 32. Actually, let me get 16. Verse 68. 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So God's saying that wherever we go as Israelites, we're going to be cursed in the city. Are we not cursed today in the city, wherever we go? It doesn't matter if you go to Georgia, Tennessee, Massachusetts, wherever the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indian live, he's being cursed because it's a prophecy from God. But no, we think that this is a fairy book that does not come to pass. The Most High says it shall come to pass for a reason, meaning it's going to happen. Now let me get 32. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So, he's, God saying our sons and our daughters shall, shall be given unto another people. Where our sons and daughters were given to a group of other nations during slavery. Right? So that's Bible prophecy. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So God's letting us know once our sons and daughters give it to another people, once your sons ship down to California or uh, down south, you're not going to have any might in your hand, meaning any power to go get your kids back. You're just going to sit there and cry and wonder where your kids are. And nothing you will be able to do about it. Verse 45. This is verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So, he says all these curses shall overcome you and pursue you wherever you go until you are destroyed. We are destroyed today because we have the nerve to call ourselves Haitian. We have the nerve to call ourselves African American, Dominican, Puerto Ricans. Those are by words that the other nations gave you. That's not what God gave you. God gave you Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Simeon. Those names have power with God. That's right. So when you call yourself Haiti, hell, the Most High is not pleasant with that word because that's not what he gave you. But he says, wherever you go, curses shall pursue you and overtake you. Read. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. So, because you don't want to do his commandments, read that again. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God because we want to be rebellious because we say that we love God and don't want to do nothing he says in the Bible read to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee so a commandment is not a um, will you do this son no I tell you to do something you do it that's it we don't talk back and forth which I commend thee read and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So how do we know this is the nails in spar? Because this is a sign. So God's letting us know also that these curses shall be as a sign upon your seed forever. That means as long as you're on earth as an Israelite man and woman, you can literally pick up this book and identify yourself with these curses. That's how you can identify 
what happened to you as a nation, as a people that's walking around here dead in the state of mind spiritually. Because if we don't know who we are, we don't know Jesus only coming for us where we were before and where we going, how can we get the kingdom of heaven and what this Bible was promised to us? Verse 68. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Most High is saying, hey son, you don't want to do what I tell you to do? We just left Egypt, which is the under the Egyptians. I'm going to bring you into Egypt. Now we have to figure out what does the word Egypt mean? It's synonymous for something. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5 and verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So... This is a way for you to identify what the word Egypt means. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means slavery. So it's, when you read verse 68, then you're going to have to attach slavery with the, what he's saying to you. This is a clue for you to know how to properly break down the scripture. Read that again from the top. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Most High is going to bring you into slavery with ships. How did your forefathers get to Haiti? Ships. How did they get to America? Ships. Dominican Republic. No matter where the Israelites were at one point, not all of them, but some point they were brought to slavery with ships. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, Thou shalt see it no more again. So Moses letting us know, the way I said it's going to happen, guess what? It's going to happen. Did it happen? Yes. Thou shalt see it no more again. You're never going to see your homeland again, which is Jerusalem, not Haiti. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. So he's letting you know, whenever you get to your location, your destination, you're going to be sold unto your enemies, and no man shall save you until Christ, the black Messiah, return. What's your question, brother? What was the reason why y'all came out here? Besides telling this message, what, what was the exact reason y'all came out here? We are committed to give this message as the prophet of the Most High. He says, why are we out here? What is the main reason we are here to give what message we are giving to the people today, right? All right. So as prophets of the Most High, just like we walk with Moses, the same spirit is still here. The message has always been the same. Because God told the Israelites that he loves you. You are above all people. But because we stiff neck, because we are destroyed for lack of knowledge, we don't want to put this, uh, pick up this Bible. We don't want to read our history book. We don't want to do the commandments. We say we love God. We we'll do go to church, though. We'll clap our hand all day in that church, but we'll never ask any questions. But as prophets, the prophets always give one message. Ezekiel uh, 317. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. So what you're looking at right here, we are the son of man. We are the son of God. He have made us a watchman unto the house of Israel. What does that mean? We are out here to watch for our people. We love our people just like God and Christ love his people. So he made us watchmen because what? God's not going to come down from heaven and speak to the people directly. So he had to put the prophets back on earth spiritually to give the message back to the Israelites that are asleep. Read. Right. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So we are out here to simply give these people warning. They're not going to listen, not all of them, but what's one listen and hear the word of the Most High and come back to the law, statute, and commandments, guess what? We did our job. Because nuclear fire is coming to America. Read. When I say unto the wicked, 
thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. So as missiles preparing to be coming to America, not sure when, but it's going to happen. It's prophecy. But our job is to give the wicked to turn around from his wicked ways. And if he happened to choose not to do that, he shall surely die in his wicked ways. Hmm? But his blood will I require at thine hand. So if we don't come out here to give our people warning that America must not maybe, must be destroyed. God going to require their blood in our hand. Guess what? I don't want that. I'd rather be on this side preaching the gospel other than being on that side and don't even realize that dead man walking. Me. Verse 19. Yet, if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So if we come out here, we do our job. We warn you of what's to come in your wicked ways. To let you know a sister's not supposed to wear pants. Pants belong to a man. A man's supposed to not shave his beard because God made you a man, not a boy or a girl. If we give you all the commandments to keep the Sabbath day holy, if we go through a series of, of commandments that was commanded from before time and you don't keep the commandments or you don't come back to the Most High God, we did our job. Our bl your blood is no longer required on our end. You understand what I'm saying? So as future prophets, obviously we want you to eventually come on this side and learn exactly what was ordained for us to be. Let me get... um. Is it Jeremiah 1 and 5? Because you have to understand one thing, brother. We are the same people that walk with Moses. The spirits never went nowhere. That's why you see the so-called white man been killing us since Rome, Greek, so on and so forth. And they don't mind, they don't have no problem killing us today. They'll literally have cameras on us as they shoot us. But guess what? Not guilty. But that's in the Bible too. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1 and verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So God's letting you know, son of man, because you are the son of man. You are a Levite. Okay? He said, before I formed thee in the belly, he already knew you. He already knew your spirit. He already knew when you walked by here, you was going to stop. You already know who's not going to stop. But guess what? If one person come to repentance and we can save his life, that's a beautiful thing, not only for us, but to the angels. Read. You already knew your spirit. Read. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So, God already ordained, meaning sanctified us to be a prophet unto the nation. Think about it. How long people have been going to church? Forever. Right? Who do you think taught the pastor the Bible? His slave master. You think his slave master really going to break down this Bible to him and say, hey, pastor, go teach that Jesus is black. Go teach who the children of Israel are. Go teach who can enter the kingdom of heaven. Go teach when Christ the black Messiah returned, we go into slavery. You think the, 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 the so-called white man going to teach the pastor that? No. He's going to hide certain things from you because God called them your enemies. Your enemies don't teach you the truth. The only reason he's going to keep lying to you because he know us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians don't actually go into this book and read it for ourselves. The pastor will read this Bible, give you four or five scriptures, and then they'll clap and dance all day. So nobody sees anything wrong with that. So the question I have to ask you now, are the pastors giving the people warning from God that wrath is coming to this earth, that missiles must come to America to destroy it? It's not. Because 
What you just noticed recently with Donald Trump shaking hands uh, with Kim Jong-un is Bible prophecy. Let me show it to you. Let me get 2 Chronicles uh, 20 verse 23. Let me show you something. Because we think that because we got a little welfare, a little section 8, a little um, housing, a little job, we don't think that Everything God says must happen will happen. And there's nothing we're going to be able to do about it. It's either we repent or we're going to die in this place. That's right. That's right. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.